If you like Cupid and Psyche, you'll enjoy today's edition of Fucked Up Fairy Tales with Liz. Ding! Today I am telling The Enchanted Snake, which was retold in the Green Fairy book by Andrew Lane, which I am holding right here, but was originated by our good old friend Giambattista Basile. Once upon a time, there was this poor old woman who desperately wanted a child, but she couldn't have one popular theme in these tales. One day, when her husband came back from gathering wood for the fire, among the twigs was a little snake. Looking at the snake, the woman had a moment of self-pity for herself. Even snakes have their brood, but here I am, childless. To her surprise, the snake talked back. Since you want children so badly, you could raise me as if I were your own son. I promise you, you won't regret it. Ah! Eh, you know what, I'll do it. She and her husband raised the snake quite nicely as if he were their very own son. And when he was older and fatter and healthy and came of age, which I guess snakes can do, the snake told his father, I'm ready to take a wife. All right, son, I'll go find you a nice lady snake to get married to. Ah, fuck that noise. I want to marry the princess. Demand an audience with the king and let him know a snake wants to marry his daughter. The peasant man visited the king. Hey, I figure I got nothing to lose by asking, but I got a snake that wants to marry your daughter, and uh, I don't know, what do you think? <laughs> this fucking idiot right here. Oh, yeah, 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 it can marry my daughter. If he can turn my palace into ivory and laid with gold by noon tomorrow. <laughs> the peasant informed his snake son of what the king had said, but the snake wasn't too put off. Oh, that's no problem. All you have to do is gather a bunch of herb before sunrise and then go and rub it on the castle walls. All right, dad? Sure, son. Sounds like a great way to spend my morning. The peasant did this, and sure enough, the palace turned into ivory with gold. Uh, holy shit, what the fuck am I supposed to do now? And then before I give him my daughter's hand, he has to turn all of the paths and the interior walls of my palace to gold. By noon tomorrow. That's cool, Dad. All you have to do is gather all the trash you possibly can and scatter it all around the garden paths of the palace. <laughs> Sounds awesome. His dad was kind of an idiot. The king got his golden wish. What? But can he turn everything in my garden to precious gemstones? All right, Dad. In order to turn the king's fruit trees into precious stones, all you have to do is buy up all the fruit from the market, seed all of it, and bury those seeds at the castle grounds. <laughs> Son, you crack me up. I would literally do anything for you. And it worked, and the king had run out of excuses. All right, I guess I gotta tell my daughter. Hey, honey. Hey, daddy. I got some rough news. You know how, like, the palace has just, uh, spruced itself up magically these past few days? Yeah, what's up with that? I may have promised your hand in marriage to a literal snake? What? Look, would you just fucking do it for me? Do with me what you like, my lord and father, for your will is my law. As soon as the snake met the princess Grenonia, he wound himself around her and kissed her. Naughty! What do you say you and I get a little more privacy? Oh my god. The snake led her to a room, shut the door, and threw off his snake skin, transforming into a beautiful young man with golden hair. He embraced her and said all sorts of lovely things to her. How do you like me now, baby? Oh, very much. Now the king saw the snake shut itself into the room with his daughter. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, he's gonna eat her! He and the queen spied through the peephole to see what was happening. Oh thank god, it's just a hot guy! In their excitement, they threw open the door, inappropriate, seized the snake skin, and threw it into the fire. The hot young dude was mortified. No, what have you done? He transformed himself into a dove and flew right through the window. He did not die like most birds, but he was grievously injured. No, Babelicious guy! I have been through so many different feelings in such a short time. The Princess Grenonia could not be comforted at the loss of her husband. Overnight, she disguised herself as a peasant and left the palace determined to track him down. While she was out and about, she befriended a fox. Would you like a friend on your journey? Yes, that would be lovely. The fox acted as her guide and her friend, and one night they fell asleep under a tree and they woke up and they saw all of these birds singing in the sky. Ah, oh, they sing so beautifully. If you knew what they were saying, you would love it even more. Well, as Andrew Lang and Basile tell us, women fucking love to gossip. Well, what are they saying? They're telling the story of a handsome prince who was cursed into a snake, and when he finally met the love of his life, her stupid parents made him turn into a dove and he had to fly away. Oh my god, that's my husband! Do the birds know anything else? Turns out that flight through the window wounded his ass. Oh no, is there any way we can help him? Well, the only thing that can save him is the blood of the birds who just told you that tale. Oh, so we just have to murder all those birds. Fox friend, would you please murder all those birds for me? Uh-oh. All right, princess, hold your horses. Let's spend the day together, and tonight overnight I'll kill all those birds for you. The fox took care of all those birds, and he gathered all their blood into a little bottle for the princess. Yay! Let's go save my husband. 
Okay, girl, here's the thing. I wasn't totally honest with you. You not only need all those birds' blood, you need a little bit of mine. So I'm gonna run away now. So as Lang tells us, women use flattery and cunning as a weapon. Oh, Fox, you don't have to worry about me. You have guided me through this forest. You've been a good friend. Just take me the rest of the way there, and we'll figure something out. Oh, that's so nice. Okay, we're good. Yeah, so that bitch murdered the fox. And after her betrayal, having the blood she needed for her hot husband, she took the bottle of blood and presented herself to her husband's palace as someone who could cure him. But if I do, you have to promise me his hand in marriage. The prince's father said, no problem, that sounds great. Granonia used the blood to save the prince. She, like, put it on his head wound. And it saved his life. When his father told him that he now had to wed this peasant who had saved his life, this hot, golden-haired prince would not have it. I've already promised this gorgeous face to another dame. This tickled Granonia, and she said in her disguise, Well, your handsome highness, what if I persuaded this other woman to give up her rights to you? Would you marry me then? Fuck no! I'm loyal as hell! Even if she gave up her rights to me, my heart wouldn't change. I'm sorry, even if I lose my life, I cannot agree to this. Well, guess what, baby? You don't have to! Ha, huh, baby, it's you! The prince caught his father up on all that had happened, and the kingdoms came together for a grand wedding feast. The end. Hashtag revenge for the fox. Fucked up fairy tales with Liz. Ding!